I was curious how we can how we can understand uh, the role of the media because uh, um, obviously we we will be censored most of the Russian media, but also in this well in, across the West, there's no uh, discussion about the background of the conflict. There's no there's there's no discussion about how to end the conflict, and as you pointed out uh, as well, it's already proven that. Uh, that uh, a lot of NATO countries sabotaged the Minsk agreement for seven years. And after Russia invaded, uh, the Israelis attempted to negotiate, as you said, and they've already confirmed that the West uh, essentially sabotaged this and prevented it. And then the Turks were going to uh, negotiate the peace. And now the foreign minister of Turkey has also said that the West uh sabotaged it because they wanted to fight russia some more but th these are now in my opinion established facts yet how how can we explain the western media coverage because uh this th th these facts never occur in the media instead we're always told this was unprovoked and we only want to help ukraine by giving it weapons uh as an expert on propaganda do you see this as a propaganda or is it something else that term unprovoked is quite interesting. If you do, uh, the term unprovoked aggression has never been used in the past, almost never. In the case of Ukraine, every reference to the Russian invasion has to be called the unprovoked Russian invasion. Take a look, do a Google search for unprovoked invasion. You get a couple of million hits for unprovoked invasion of Ira of Ukraine. Try to find unprovoked invasion of Iraq. Maybe 10 people who wrote a letter to the Washington Post sometime. In fact, it's never been used before. And any psychologist can explain exactly what's going on. The reason for insisting on calling it the unprovoked invasion is you know perfectly well that it was provoked. In fact, there are extensive provocations going back to the 1990s. As I said, that's not my opinion. It's the opinion of almost the whole top level of the US diplomatic uh, echelon. Uh, anybody with eyes open can see it. And it's hawks, doves, everyone who knows anything about it. Of course, it was provoked. Provoked doesn't mean justified, that's separate, but it's obviously provoked. On the other hand, the US invasion of Iraq, which was much worse than the Russian invasion of Ukraine, though you're not allowed to say that, it was completely unprovoked. There was no provocation for the US-British invasion of Iraq. There's plenty of provocation for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. They are both cases of criminal aggression. That's independent of the provocation. But it's very interesting, tells you a lot about propaganda to see the way the phrase unprovoked invasion has been become not only popular, but almost essential in the last uh, year or two. You have to call it that, even though everyone knows it's total nonsense. It's a way of trying to emphasize, try to get people not to pay attention to what's obvious. In fact, the propaganda on this is quite sophisticated. Let's take another example. Uh, take the sabotage of the Nord Stream pipeline. It's been, it was immediately blamed on the Russians, which is almost inconceivable. Now why on earth should the Russians sabotage um, their own major capital investment? And for what possible purpose? Um, if they wanted to stop uh, gas from flowing to Europe, all they have to do is turn a lever. They don't have to destroy their main capital investment. So the idea was crazy in the first place. Uh, if you ask which country had the capability and the motivation to destroy the pipeline, it's immediately obvious. The United States wasn't a secret even. They kept saying, we have to stop this pipeline. Uh, President Biden said, uh, we're going to prevent it, you know. Uh, nobody else, maybe Poland working for the United States, but nobody else had, but you just cannot say this. And it's interesting the way it's handled. I wrote an article about it recently. There was a 
spate of articles in the press a couple of weeks ago saying there's now some skepticism about whether Russia sabotaged the pipeline. That's brilliant propaganda. The idea that Russia sabotaged the pipeline is outlandish. But we now establish the assumption, the presupposition that Russia was responsible, not us. We don't even talk about that. But to show how free and open we are, we even allow some skepticism about this idiotic idea. That's sophisticated propaganda.